Hey, it's Roger from Hoka Ono Ono Australia, and why do I have all these shoes here? Well, obviously some of you would have seen this year and in the future, we're partnered with Ironman Oceania as their technical running shoe partner. So what we want to do is actually talk about the range of Hoka road shoes for triathletes to seriously consider, because we offer options for everyone from the podium to right on cutoff. Like wherever you're running, however you're running, we've got shoes for you. And it's a little bit of this is different to this because how and why, why would I be in this shoe rather than that, than that shoe? So looking firstly at the Rincon. So this is a new lightweight trainer and racer that's arrived this year. It's beautiful for triathletes because it's got that pull tab on the back. And if you feel good on race day, knowing that you've got something that feels cushy and comfortable, but weighs almost nothing on your feet, then the Rincon is a great option. Really breathable, really drainable. We know that's important because a lot of the Ironman races in Australia are in hot and humid environments. That pull tab is obviously great for you. You can put a speed lace in there and you've got minimal protection on the outsole. This, the Clifton, is going to be more of your high volume trainer if this is your race day option. Uh, so that's the Rincon, same amounts of cushion underfoot, but you're saving about 18% of the weight of this shoe in that shoe. So that's the Rincon, new for 2019. Now the Clifton, extremely popular. It's like pretty much, uh, it was when we last checked, this was among our most popular lightweight women's shoes in triathlon. Guys, very popular as well. Now the two shoes that a lot of people have been using in whatever variation up until now has been the Mac and the Clifton. So the Clifton is their more cushioned ride, maybe their volume trainer, and then the Mac is a little bit less cushioned, a little bit more responsive, more of a faster feel. And it's got that nice broader foot shape, which is great when you get off the bike and also it drains and breathes really well. So if it's been sitting in a car park in transition, getting soaked while you're out on the bike in the rain and you chuck this on your feet, that's dry in about two minutes as you run out. So that's really useful there too. So that is the Mac and that's the Clift. And I'll talk about those shoes a bit more just uh, in their own right in a sec. Rincon, really cushioned, very lightweight. Rehi or Rehi as the Americans call it. This is kind of like if NASA made a racing flat. So it's a rubber injected EVA. It's very soft but also really high rebound. If you're a very capable runner, like let's say Josh Amberger, we're all aware of Josh, then that's a pretty good option. Again, just like the Mac, really breathable, really drains very quickly, easy to slip on and great to race in if you're a pretty, let's face it, capable, more front of pack kind of athlete. So that's the Rehi or Rehi if you're from America. Now, Probably the most talked about shoe in triathlon and from us on road this year is of course the Carbon X. We're probably the only, we are actually the only brand I can think of that has two carbon raced shoes. So let's talk about these first and then I'll talk about this by itself. Carbon Rocket, latest greatest version of a shoe that we began work on at Hoka in around 2012, 2013 and then Carbon X. So this is the one that arrived in the marketplace with a lot of fanfare this year and people have been loving this shoe for a variety of reasons. Firstly, why would you choose a Carbon Rocket over a Carbon X? If you are the kind of athlete who really only wants a one mil pitch and you run with a really beautiful foot strike, so you don't need a broader, more forgiving platform, then the Carbon Rocket is probably where you would ideally be. It's got more flex, through the plate than the X does. Because it's got that lower drop, it's got that more narrow platform, that's the benefit it's get, giving you because it's assuming that you've got a perfectly straight foot strike. Now the Carbon X, this is a front runner's shoe. This is a high quality athlete's shoe. And because of the way that it's been constructed, it's also a more versatile race day shoe for a variety of athletes. What's so great about this shoe? You've got a generous, uh, midfoot and forefoot fit. So you're going to be comfortable running a long way at high effort in this shoe. It's broader under the heel and through the mid and forefoot than a number of faster race shoes. And that means it's going to be more forgiving as to how you land. So as your form 
falls apart, you might get off the bike pretty sore and tired already. This is going to be a more forgiving way to run. It's going to accommodate a greater variety of foot strikes. But also what happens is firstly, this material is very high rebound, lasts really well and gives you a lot of life. So in terms of bounce and spring and pop, you're going to get back a lot of the effort that you put into this shoe in the work that it does for you. But then the invisible part of this shoe is of course the carbon plate. Now the carbon plate in this shoe essentially forks under the big toe. So it runs the length of the shoe, which means you've got a nice quick transition to toe off as you hit because that stiff midsole is propelling you forward. But then the way that it's constructed, if you don't have a perfect foot strike like you might want in the carbon rocket, and if you are over pronating or pronating heavily on the medial side of this shoe, then what's going to happen is the time of carbon under your big toe actually loads up and resupinates you as you come through toe off. So it's helping you to achieve a more efficient running style. It's actually giving back a lot of the work that you put into it. And it's also helping as you fatigue. So that more forgiving uh, base shape, very broad, so it's going to give you a more accommodating landing, whether you hit on your heel or your midfoot. And then you've got that forgiving uh, foot shape, but also the way that that carbon plate works beautifully and gives you a really quick toe off and very responsive ride through the ball and forefoot. So that is the Carbon X. And then that also should answer the question that we've been hearing a bit. Would I get the, the Rincon or would I get the Carbon X? And the simple answer is, they're two very cool but very different shoes. This is going to be your plusher, more cushy ride, extremely lightweight. There's very little on a running shoe wall uh, that's as light as the Rincon. But then Carbon X, it's got all the technology, it's cutting edge, it's got all the latest bells and whistles, it's doing a very different job for you on race day than the Rincon. Rehigh, like I said, that's basically a high rebound racing flat. And then you get to our actual racing flat. So this is the Tracer. If people ask, oh, I've got kind of a narrow foot, what's gonna be a good shoe for me? I do sometimes recommend the Tracer just on shape alone because out of all of our shoes, this probably has the most conforming fit for like a narrower foot. And then essentially the way that this works is it gives you that classic sort of narrow, uh, closer to the ground platform of a racing flat, but with a bit of a forgiving heel unit in terms of being a bit cushy and plush through there, but also that nice rocker, which is more efficiently helping you through contact phase. And then, as I said, Mac 2. Now, Mac, to me, in many ways, you can understand this as it's a bit like a Carbon X without the carbon plate. So these two shoes could go together very well as training and racing partners, because you've got that soft heel, firmer mid and forefoot so it's forgiving here as you hit back in your heel or that broad base again that works really well so that you're in a lightweight neutral shoe that's lower to the ground uses a highly responsive rubberized eva but at the same time because of the way that foot shape is oversized if you're falling apart that's going to give you a bit of a forgiving ride medially. It's going to do some of the work that you need from a shoe as you do start to fall apart. Uh, and then we also have our more classic options, and these are great across a general running community, and that is the Elevon. So the Elevon gives you a lot of what the Bondi does in terms of amount of cushion, but it does it in a package that's probably a little bit more responsive. Uh, it's a little bit firmer in some ways, and it also is a very popular option with people who just don't like anything touching them in the arch at all. The Elevon really just leaves the arch and the midfoot alone, and it gives you uh, an injection molded EVA base that's kind of stable and firm without getting in the way. And then you've got that classic Hocker compression molded EVA sort of marshmallow feel right against the foot. You can stick with the classic Bondi, of course, that's going to get you from A to B, however far it is from A to B, or however tired you are between A and B. And also the Arahi. So the Arahi is a very popular option for people who want a light, flexible, comfortable racing shoe or training shoe, but need a bit of stability. So that shoe works as a stability alternative to the Clifton. So they're both in that light, premium, cushioned 
category, but that extended post gives you a variety of pronation control depending whether you're pronating strongly or just a bit on race day, depending how good you're feeling or how tired you've become. So looking at that range, you might understand, yeah, it can be confusing looking at how many hawkers there are now for road, but hopefully we've highlighted for you some of the key reasons that you're going to choose one option over another from that road range from Hawker.